Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can prove that the variance of a binomial random variable is given by this uh, expression right here, where n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success. Now, if you feel like you want to try and do it on your own first, uh, here are little notes which you can refer to and it serves as a guideline for you guys. And let me just walk through this guideline. Uh, the first step is always to uh, understand or uh, to remember that if you want to find the variance of x, uh, this is the uh, common formula or common um, step that people will consider. And... Um, this part right here is going to be a bit challenging and therefore we can make it easier by considering finding this okay that means if you want to find expected value of x squared uh, instead of doing that you focus on finding this um, whole thing which is expected value of x x minus one and here you add with the expected value of x and uh, these are the process of finding this function here okay this part expected value of this function and you will come across this answer and um, after that you can come up with a simple mathematical representation where you let y becomes x minus 2 and m becomes n minus 2 and then you'll be able to get the result here for uh, this uh, finding expected value of x x minus 1 and we're not done yet because you have to go on further in order to get uh, what's variance of x but uh, I'm just sharing this little trick here to, to help you get through the motion and probably uh, you'll be able to to solve this and be able to show that the variance of x is np times 1 minus p okay uh, right let us begin Mm. So, variance of x, oops, okay, so here we would like to show that variance of x is this guy, and we're going to start off with uh, perhaps the usual common formula to find variance of x is given by this one, and um, we are already okay with this part. We already got the result. Uh, in the previous video, I've shown you the result of EX uh, is going to be NP. Okay, so that's the result that we have obtained. I'm sorry, I just need, I forgot the square on top. Okay, so this one here, the expected value of X is, is given. It is NP. Now, our job is just to make sure we get what's the value of this. Okay, so what is this one? Now, let me just show you what happens if we try to attempt uh, finding the expected value of EX squared, okay? So, if we have EX squared, this is the same thing as having X squared and FX, okay? And uh, what is X? Let me just write down what's X. So, X here is a binomial random variable where the values of x can be from 0, 1, 2 until n. Okay, and if it is a binomial random variable, the probability distribution is given by this uh, quite familiar formula. Okay, so this is the distribution minus x. Now, taking that information, we know that uh, for this part here, we have to write x from 0 until n and then uh, we know that fx here is going to be this value where we can replace that with nx, px, 1 minus p and minus x. Yeah? And I hope you can see that when when x is 0, when x is 0, the whole uh, thing here is going to be 0. So, 
in other words we can start the whole process at x equals to 1 okay so this is what we're going to do we can start the process at x equals to 1 until n and then here we've got x squared so n factorial uh, so this one here sorry this one here is a combination choosing x out of n which can be mathematically represented as n factorial x factorial n minus x factorial px 1 minus p n minus x mm. now i hope that you can see um, if i change the representation of x factorial here it will look like this okay <coughs> Okay, mm. excuse me. X factorial here can be written as mm, x times x minus 1 factorial. And if you don't know how this comes about, you have to refer to my previous video where I have talked about why this is as such. Okay. <coughs> excuse me. Now you can see clearly that one of the x above here can be cancelled out with one at the bottom. But we still have one x above, which cannot be cancelled out anymore. And this is where we have our problem. And that is why to make it easy, uh, we are not going to, to find this. We are not going to find this. Instead, we are going to find this this result right here okay so that's what's going to, uh, to happen next we cannot find this one because then the problem is our x here has got no partner at the bottom to be cancelled out and we're going to get stuck okay so um let me just erase this so that is why a simple trick is is given right uh, there where instead of finding ex squared, let's go and find this one. Let's go and find e. Um, sorry. Let's go and find e x x minus one. Now I hope you can see why the the idea is to find this guy because uh, remember. Remember, we have x factorial at the bottom. Now, x factorial at the bottom can be written in terms of x times x minus 1 factorial. And this function here will be uh, uh, seen uh, at the top. So, here we have x times x minus 1. Of course, um, if you have that, later you will see that this one here can be cancelled out with this one. And then... Uh, x minus 1 can also be cancelled out if you write that bottom part here with x minus 1, x minus 2 factorial. So you can cancel that out. So that's the idea why uh, we are going to find this guy instead of finding the x squared. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's just focus on that. Let's focus on that first. Okay, so now uh, what we have here is um, if you try to find this 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 whole thing here, what is this whole thing? This whole thing becomes um, actually this becomes e x squared minus e x. Sorry, this becomes e x squared minus x. Okay, you multiply that so. We get rid of the of the bracket here so you get e x squared minus x and that is equal to e x squared minus e x okay so you will get some result and if you want to find what is e x squared then uh you can add plus e x in order to get e x squared okay you can get rid of minus e x by adding uh e x but uh, don't worry too much about it. Um, we will 
uh, see that when you you go through that later okay so now let's just focus on what is the most important thing right now in front of us is to get this value what is expected value of x and x minus 1 okay mm. so according to the definition this is what's going to happen we're going to consider the whole function here x x minus 1 times with fx what is our fx this is our fx so just write down your fx and x px 1 minus p and minus x now of course x should begin from 0 until n but you can see if if you plug in x equals to 0 into this the term will disappear the term will become 0 also if you put 1 you substitute 1 into this whole thing this part here will become 1 minus 1 which is 0 so the whole term here disappear therefore we can say that our x here can begin from 2 until n all right so i hope that is clear uh, with you guys why uh, the the number here starts from zero from two sorry okay now um let us continue the process here we have n x is equal to two this guy here we have x times x minus one and we're going to change this uh, representation here with uh, something that you have seen uh, which involves factorial so we have n factorial and then here we have x factorial and minus x factorial okay and then here we are going to have p now i'm going to change this representation here okay let me just Mm, right down here this represent this px here can be written in terms of p x minus 2 with p squared i hope we can see that this process here the whole thing here the whole thing here doesn't change this original uh, term which is px this is equal to px because if you apply the law of exponent, the, the result for this one is just p x minus 2 plus 2. And negative 2 plus 2 can be cancelled out. So you'll get back p to the power of x, which is uh, what's given on this part right here. So we're just changing the, the look of it. Okay, uh, We're not introducing something new. We're just changing the, the look really. Okay. So that's what's going on there. Okay. Uh, right. And then, uh, what else? <clears throat> so, then it will be multiplied with uh, 1 minus P and minus X. So, therefore, um, that's uh, our new expression that we have right there. And then, uh, I'm going to focus on this part right now on x factorial okay on x factorial now I hope you can see that um, if you have uh, x factorial that can be written as x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 and you're going to keep on reducing one number as you go on until you reach number one at the end okay and of course uh, if you want to uh, consider uh, this part you want to consider this part here till the end uh, then x factorial can be written in terms of x times x minus 1 factorial uh, details about this 
or more examples about this i have already described or demonstrated in the previous video so if you are not sure what's going on in this part i suggest that you uh, study the previous video which is related to proving that ex is equal to np so i think the example hit there is a bit easier compared to this one yeah Alright, so I hope you can see that x factorial can be written as x times x minus 1 factorial. Also, x factorial is also the same thing as writing it in terms of what color I'm going to use, maybe black. So, this is also the same thing. I can write down x factorial in terms of perhaps I want to consider this part together. So, x times x minus 1 times with and then I'm going to consider the whole uh, pack of other values at the end. And that will become x minus 2 factorial. Do you agree with me? I hope you do. Um, if you can't see what's going on, we need to come up with some, some numbers that, that can help you understand this or grasp this idea uh, better. For example, let's talk about 5 factorial. 5 factorial is... 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This is the same thing as 5 times 4 factorial. Yeah, because um, the whole thing here, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 4 factorial. Also, you can also write 5 factorial in terms of 5 times 4 times with the rest of it which is 3 factorial so you can group these two together and the rest so it becomes 5 times 4 times 3 factorial and that's what uh, I did right here I'm going to group x with x minus 1 and then the rest will be uh, given this simple notation of x minus 2 factorial now I hope you can see why I'm doing that because I want to be able to cross out this term with the one at the bottom, this one here. Okay, so that's the plan. All right. Now let me just erase this part because we need space to write down our result. Okay. <clears throat> okay, hang on. It's not working. Why is it not working? Okay. Okay, so that's what's going on. I'm just going to write down that part. Um, so here what we have is we have this one. X is equal to 2 until n. Here we've got x. X minus 1. And uh, of course, this part um we're going to change it to x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 factorial okay and here we have n minus x factorial okay uh n factorial can also be written in the same manner so we can write down here as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial okay and here we've got p x minus 2 times with p squared and here is 1 minus p n minus x and from here you can see that um, this part can be easily cancelled out with the one at the bottom and then what we're going to do next is we're going to take out n and p squared outside of this whole process because they obviously don't depend on x so the whole thing here depends on x but n and p do not so we can consider them uh, as outside of the whole process okay so let's do that now <clears throat> here we have uh, 
n and also sorry not just n but also n minus 1 and then we have p squared okay so this these three items here okay um here we have n n minus 1 and p squared and here is the summation of x from 2 until n and we have this term n minus 2 factorial and so on so we're going to write down that n minus 2 We have n minus 2 factorial. At the bottom, uh, we have x minus 2. So, x minus 2 factorial. And then here we have n minus x factorial. Up here, we have p, x minus 2, 1 minus p, n minus x. So, we have managed to demonstrate our result at this, at this point given here, okay? Uh, now, what we're going to do is, we're going to simplify the look by, for example, letting, um, so we're going to let this, or we're going to represent this whole thing with a simple alphabet, for example, M, and this one here, we're going to call this whole thing as y so we make it look even more simple yeah that's the idea okay so that's what we're going to do i'm going to call this this is one okay um so we let let um m becomes n minus 2 and y becomes x minus 2 Okay, so we're going to change the representation now. Therefore, 1 becomes um, n, n minus 1, p squared. And this is um, m factorial. x minus 2 is y factorial. And what is n minus x? So what is n minus x? So n minus x is equal to uh, n here is m plus 2. Okay, from this equation, you can see that n is equal to m plus 2. And then from this one here, you can see that x is equal to y plus 2. And by solving this, you will see that n minus x is equal to m minus y. So that's the result here that we're going to replace. Uh, on this uh, spot on this position so we have m minus y factorial next p x minus 2 is going to be replaced with y so p to the power of y 1 minus p and uh, n minus x is this one which is m minus y okay so m minus y um right next this becomes n n minus 1 p squared and i hope you can see that um, this whole item here this whole this whole thing here is actually uh, summing up the probabilities in the binomial distribution so the result here is going to be equal to to 1 okay uh, but before that i forgot uh, we need to define this one here this is y so we know we no longer have x so this is y y will begin from zero well you can see that this is x equals to two but now we have y at this position so when x is two when x is two y becomes two minus two which is zero and when x is n when x is n y becomes n minus two but what is n minus 2? n minus 2 is m. So we can write it down here until m. And this is the process, like I told you just now, this is the process of finding the probabilities for y0, y1, y2, until ym, and add them up. So when you add them, all the probabilities, when you add all the probabilities, the result here is going to be equal to 1 because that's the characteristic of a probability distribution which you have learned in chapter 3. 
So the result is going to be equal to 1 and therefore um, we can see we can say that therefore um, e x x minus 1 is equal to n n minus 1 p squared. Okay, so that's the result for expected value of x x minus 1. Okay. Now, let me just show you what is this thing. So here, I can write down for this one here, we have e x squared minus x is equal to n, n minus 1, p squared. So this here uh, can be separated, the process. So we have e x squared minus e x is equal to n, n minus 1, p squared. Our objective, remember, our objective is actually to find what is ex, ex squared. Okay, what is ex squared? Because this is the value that we need in order to find the variance. For this one here, it is already obtained and the answer is np. Okay. And since you have come to this uh, junction here, we know that therefore, E x squared is going to be equal to this guy plus E x. Okay, this guy plus E x. And that's what it meant by this, this part right here. You're going to plus E x to the result of this um, expected value of x times x minus 1. Okay, so um, naturally, if you want to find what is E x squared, therefore, uh, the result here which is this one, is going to be uh, add up to ex. Okay, so here we have n, n minus 1, p squared, plus, sorry, not, uh, yeah, plus. Uh, what is ex? ex is np. Okay, so np. So that is the result that we are looking for in order to find our variance. Okay, now let's move on to finding variance. Therefore, variance of x is going to be this thing. So here we have n, n minus 1, p squared plus np. And you're going to minus np and you square it. So when you have np and you square it, the result is going to be minus n squared p squared. Yeah? So you got to simplify this process. So it becomes n squared minus n p squared plus n p minus n squared p squared. Here we have n squared p squared minus n p squared plus n p minus n squared and p squared, which you see this term, this term can be cancelled out and this one here you can factor np out so we're going to factor n and p out so here we've got positive np so here 1 minus this one here p okay so you factor n and p out and you are left with this one okay and this is similar to what you are asked to show that is the variance of x is going to be np times 1 minus p. Okay, um, thank you very much for um, listening. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.